how are you doing? I hope you're well. We have an, uh, an, it's a new week, so we have a new word of the week. And this week, our word of the week is something that we actually get wrong sometimes. When you communicate, often we put that down to it's us speaking. But today we're going to look at what being an effective communicator is, because today our word of the week is communication. It's something we do every day. It's something that some of us do well, but actually perhaps not many of us really. You might think you're an effective communicator, but are you a good listener? Because the two work together to be a great communicator, you also have to be a great listener. Communication is the way we share our thoughts. It's the way we share our feelings. It's the way we share information with other people. And it can be through talking but it could be through writing, through gestures, through facial expressions, through listening to each other. Now, if we get our communication right, effective communication helps us to understand each other, to work together, and to be harmonious, to be more loving. And of course, I would tell you one of the greatest communicators of all time was Jesus. And we welcome his presence now as we make the sign of the cross together. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's start with prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us the ability to communicate with one another and with you. As we gather here today, help us to listen attentively, speak clearly and understand deeply. May the words we share reflect your love and wisdom. Guide us in our discussion and open our hearts to the messages you have for us. Amen. Our Bible reading today comes from the letter of James and what he wrote was really some very straightforward advice for followers of Jesus. He talks about everyday topics. He talks about things like how to deal with tough times, the importance of not just listening to what God's saying, but actually doing it as well. How to watch what we say so we don't hurt other people. He highlights the importance of not treating people differently based on how rich or poor they are. He quite simply reminds us that our actions, including our communication, should be about faith. So this is a reading from the letter of James. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what does that mean for us? Well, think about the world that you live in today. Communication happens all the time. Most of us are glued to things like this. Sometimes we communicate without even speaking. Perhaps, this is an old school phrase now, we are texting, with, it's, it's, it's messaging now, isn't it? Social media, emails, you know, we live in a world of MS Teams now with video calling as well. But with all of these tools available to us, do we actually communicate better? Imagine a world, just for a minute, where everyone was very quick to listen, but very slow to speak. Just as we heard in that reading from the letter of James. It would be a lot more peaceful, I think. But communication is more than that. It's more than just avoiding the arguments. It's more than avoiding the misunderstandings. It's about trying to connect with someone. It's about trying to understand someone, understand their feelings. Can you see something from somebody else's perspective? Now, Jesus was the master of communication. Whether he was talking to a large crowd, whether he was talking to his disciples, whether he was talking to God, he always knew what to say and he always knew how to say it. But more importantly, he listened. He listened to the people's words. He listened to their tone. He listened ultimately to their hearts. 
And that's what made people feel loved. That's what made people feel that he understood them. Now, regardless of your religion, think about how you communicate. Are you like that? Do you listen with the intention to understand or are you just stood there? Are you just waiting for your turn to speak? When you do get to speak, are your words kind? Are your words helpful? If you get your communication right, it can change lives. Effective communication changes lives. It heals broken relationships. It builds trust. It will bring us closer to each other. And if you want it to, bring you closer to God too. So this week, let's be better communicators. Let's see if our words, and perhaps more importantly, our listening, can help people feel understood. Now they are here, two people that I know you love listening to, Max and Ethan, and a giant turnip. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Max and Ethan being really cool. Today's word of the week is communication. And we decided to, because like last week's word, it's quite simple. We're going to show it through a story, a metaphor, if you will. Yeah. So this is the story of the giant turnip. Some of you may have already known it. Now, there were people on a farm, and then they came out one day to see that their crops, one of their turnips, was massive. And if you've seen the story, you know they all work together to pull the turnip out. Now, what the story misses over is that the, is that the people in this story likely had to communicate as pulling out a giant turnip is no small task. It's literally called a giant turnip. A giant turnip. So, because of that, this challenge was overcome, this obstacle was overcome <coughs> by them communicating. Anyway, thanks for watching today's episode. And we'll see you guys next time. Let us pray for the world and for ourselves, that we might be better communicators. Lord, we pray for the leaders of the world. Guide them in their speeches and decisions, that they may communicate peace and unity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our school community, our teachers, students and staff. Help us to communicate with respect and kindness, always seeking to build each other up. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask for your blessing on those who struggle to communicate, maybe through fear or misunderstanding. Open our hearts to listen and understand them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Finally, we pray for our families and friends. May our communication be filled with love and patience, reflecting your love in our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So, are you going to be a better communicator this week? Let's think about those words from James. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. Can we build our relationships at home, at school, in our communities by being active listeners, by being thoughtful communicators? Let's see if we can make a positive impact to people around us this week in everything that we do. And we end as we began by thinking about one of the greatest communicators who managed to make everyone feel loved and welcomed in his listening and in his words as we make the sign of the cross together in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's be great communicators this week everyone. Have a beautiful week.
Bye-bye.